Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. All right, just some updates here first. Uh, those of you who go to my actual channel where there's the picture of me and artwork, changed the artwork, got rid of the moon, put up some some of the work that I've made here over the past time, um, over the past. <laughs> uh, also put up a picture of me. Now that picture. <laughs> That was taken in Rome after a 10 mile hike, so I pulled up the first grave. I'm sitting on somebody's grave because I was exhausted. So, uh, next, uh, Chris Becker, new subscriber, welcome on board. He's a local guy and uh, probably knows the little history behind how we got to know one another here. Um, Need any help with your shop? I understand he's working out of his garage right now and he's going to be opening up a shop soon. I got a truck. If you need help moving stuff, let me know. Love to come down and shoot your place and show everybody what's going on. Um, the Noga Knockoff. Going to take you over to the bench here and show you the progress and what I've been spending all my time on here working on it. So let's take you to the bench. There we go, recording finally. All right, I guess I'll do this live from the little machine shop here. ER32 square collet block with nut. I was looking all over the place. Usually they only come from England, so I was surprised to find LMS of all places had one. Yeah, it looks nice, collet block, whoa. That's pretty cool looking. That's gonna be greasy. All right, need a paper towel. Hang on. No, the paper towel's over here. Forgot about it. That looks like it's done really nice. Uh, something to cut it open with right here. Scissors. Why not? Greasy looking. Yuck. Get rid of that. All right. Come on out. Whoa, boy, that's pretty well machined. Yeah, it is greasy. <laughs> so they do take care of this stuff. That's a strange surface. It's like somebody hand did this on a piece of sandpaper. It's curved. Huh. Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. How do you tighten? Oh, I know. You tighten it up. Tighten it up with a wrench. Wow. Oh, the back is ground. I can see that. Ah, paper towel isn't holding it all. There. Get that cleaned up. Get the inside cleaned up. The inside, which is what counts. This should fit. This is really nice, guys. This will fit in the vise nicely. Jeez. Alright, yeah, I bought this because I get my... It's a pain trying to spindex up there. And there's so many times I just need to do four sides or drill it straight or something so this would be better than a v-block I think especially with all the collets I have and this was interesting because it says with a ball bearing I never heard of that before so if you can get it open Dave ah, there we go oh that's wrapped too because you can't get it separately I was looking on their site you have to come with ball bearing component part of 4106 it's number two so eh. yeah, that's gonna be greasy too all right well scissors back it's got a ball bearing in it and they wind up buying the octangular one just to get the other one with the ball bearing but I gotta see how this works on the I don't see any ball bearings here oh there must be though wow this is different looking that is hot looking excellent finish what is this There's a mark on it oh, some kind of goober oh what is oh that's probably filled because it did had something to do with where the bearings went in or something 
Alright, so what does it do? It's supposed to have bearings in there. Yeah, it does. That rotates, folks. This is going to be really interesting. Oh, it moves easily, too. Excellent finish on it. Wow. I love this kind of stuff. So, this will be interesting to try. Because I guess the collet hits this surface down in here. And then this allows it to spin. There's no part number or anything on it. Yeah, you know, it was just in a greasy bag, and that's it. So, I'm sure this goes on here, and I wonder why this guy didn't come with just a regular nut. This is not going on, folks. Okay. What's the problem? There it is. Why do you have this with a bearing rather than a collet nut? Really curious. Because this by itself, I was looking on the internet different places. This is 60 bucks, $59 just for the nut. This whole thing was $46.52. It was actually $37 for this. Seven bucks basically shipping and almost $3 for taxes, sales tax. But this is nice. I'm going to save up. I think I'm going to go and order the other guy too. But I can't wait to try this on... Um, on the lathe, let's see what happens, so there you go. should have been over further so you don't see a white patch uh, this was the generic I guess dial indicator test indicator holder off of Amazon I think it was around $30 but I guess you saw in the last video I was gonna make another one and this was a total failure because as I finished this and machine the part that goes on here I realized that there's nothing gonna hold this on so I went back to the drawing board because that was my mistake I didn't stop and either duplicate this thing completely and I didn't duplicate it because I can't make these type of ends or whatever um, so the other mistake was didn't stop and just think out of the box and like I should as an engineer and just redesign it so what I did was think out of the box alright we've got the basic unit and I bought these I think I've showed these in another video and what did I do alright I figured um, why do all this because this is hard you gotta precision machine this make this teeny little shelf that when you slide this in it doesn't come out but it spins then you gotta cut a groove in here I bought a little grooving tool to go in there and you stick this in and I used a paper clip but you gotta make this um, little clip thing because that's what they used in here to do this you can't even see it but there's a clip in there and if you, why do all that and then you gotta manufacture this rod and somebody was asking too uh, how does this work well they've got these rods inside and you can see there's a bevel here well this would go in this way 
when you crank this knob down there's a bevel that pushes on this bevel which pushes this rod down and it jams on the ball so you've got very little surface area actually adding friction to the ball to keep it from moving so and this guy's got a bevel here this piece going through is a bevel here and a bevel here and a rod and a rod so when you crank it down it pushes everything apart so what I was thinking is alright we've got this make this part where you just put this in here like this and you thread the thing and where's the cups uh, great I'm missing one here is it in one of these guys alright I gotta go find that thing here no I don't it's built in did the camera move yeah, someone. Okay. Uh, it's built into the rod. Here we go. So you make your extension tube. You have this guy. You screw it in here and it locks down on the ball. Poof. So we need a nut. Five millimeter nut here. Run it on here. Screw it in there. And tighten it down. Come on, get in there. There we go. And with this guy, you can't go too far in because it hits the magnet. You can't rotate this thing. So you can use this kind of nut or um, one of the guys with the nylon insert on it. So there it is. And if I actually um, put the groove in there like this, I'd have a lot more movement than that. But I'm figuring, all right, for now, let's just do that. So now, upper piece. Um, I haven't made any of these. This was an old one that I had uh, scrapped. And let's make this guy, which simply screws and it's threaded. And by the way, I do have prints for this thing up on the uh, website. So it screws on there, and this goes in here. And you'll be done. So if I make it like this guy, where you can stick it in the end, and this has got the set screws, you can stick it in here. So uh, this doesn't have the dovetail on it. I can put this in here this way, and I can come down on my work. So I got, and you can rotate it without a problem. So I've got a lot of flexibility in that. Then I was thinking, well, let's go a little bit further here, and bought and this guy is up on the print you got this smaller one and it comes with the cup here's the bigger one just kind of for comparison so what happens if I make another one of these guys and I bore it drill it out so this drops into here this guy goes into here and this screws on here you can do it Dave, there you go and then take one of these guys, make another one, of course aluminum and thread it and it goes on there so now I've got even more flexibility to this thing so now I can pivot and pivot and go all over the place whatever I want and spin it around I can spin this guy so there's uh, a lot of flexibility to that guy and you can make whatever you want you know this could have gone on here get rid of that and then just drill and tap that out and screw one of those on there so it eliminates a lot of stuff here doing this and then I was thinking you know wait a minute maybe this is too long so there's no set rules as to how long you want to make that what happens you just make a shorter one here because this one actually would work for the mini lathe because that is a little bit too long so you've got ultimate flexibility here this thing is so uh, I'd say so easy to make but yes and no but that's basically the design if you guys want to improve on this or do whatever you can make your own Noga knockoff um, that I already had but I've shown in a previous video you can make that you can make that you can make all these pieces 
this was I think fifteen dollars and these were like uh, off of Amazon I think there was seven bucks for four of the bigger ones and seven bucks for four of the smaller ones and it would be nice to have I need to make my own final finally a ball type maker so I can make any of my own sizes but there you go you got a complete assortment of whatever you want to do here so that's it um, simplified the whole design so have fun guys <laughs>